since 2003. This is the Sports Source. East Tennessee's number one sports talk show. Presented by Hype Wrench, and by Junk Be Gone, and by the Garza Law Firm. With your host, John Pennington. The Sports Source starts now. Happy Halloween Eve, Eve, Eve. Uh, it's Halloween-ish. Happy uh, Halloween-ish. Welcome into the Sports Source and our Junk Beyond Studios for today's edition. I must apologize right off the bat. We have a skeleton crew, no pun intended. Uh, there's only eight of us here today, so it's a little smaller crew than usual. But we still have eight guys here for you. It's unbelievable uh, the number of folks who are kind enough and willing enough to get in here and come in here on a Sunday morning and break down games for you. Um, we will be talking, of course, about Tennessee's 33-27 win over Kentucky last night. I've said this on this show for a long, long time. Kentucky will always find a new way to lose to Tennessee. And a defender, or a defender going down to injury, was he faking it? That would have been costly. But a defender getting injured and then causing a runoff, that means Kentucky doesn't get a last chance at, a, at changing the game, turning the game around. Uh, remarkable. So we'll break all of that down on today's show. Let's tell you what's on the docket because it's more than just that. We've got the top takeaways from the game. We're going to talk about the secondary and the pass rush. Boy, they disappeared yesterday. We'll talk about Joe Milton's improvements. Some people are seeing a lot of it. Some people are saying, eh, not good enough. Where does our panel stand? Uh, running back usage. They're getting big production. Are they being creative with those guys? Big red zone worries for this team. How do they get that fixed? Also, in the SEC play, man, they're having fast starts and slow finishes. And we'll do a complete Vols Bowl outlook, and as well as the Cavalaris line. And we've got a poll for you to take part in. Lots of stuff. First segment brought to you by our friends at Junk Be Gone. Folks, you ever let stuff just pile up around your house, around the garage? Got stuff in the shed that you haven't touched in years? Get rid of all your junk by calling Junk Be Gone. Whether you load it up, where you just ask their team to do it for you, they haul it all away. No trips to the dump, you just make a phone call. Junkbegone.biz is where you can learn more. We appreciate this fine, local, family-owned company for being a big part of the sports source year in, year out. Heck, that's why it's the Junk Begone Studios. All right, let's welcome in the first wave of panelists today, our small, small crew. <laughs> Jimmy Himes right here, VFL Mike Stoll right there, Josh Ward, VFL Will Overstreet. We got more guys waiting in the wings. Uh, I want to give you the poll question to start out with, and I kind of teased this earlier. It's very simple. Um, has Joe Milton turned a corner over the last two weeks? And uh, we need to know, yeah, he's done well. Maybe you're like on the fence. I can't decide. I gave you a can't decide button. And then also, nope, still bad. You make the call. You tell us where things stand with Joe Milton and the quarterback situation. Um, all right. Simple segment. Everybody just gives their biggest takeaway from that victory. Jimmy, I start with you. I thought that uh, you're on the road against a red-hot quarterback and you found a way to win. And, and you mainly, I thought, found a way to win because you ran the ball for 254 yards against the second-best run defense in the league. You also shut down the SEC's best running back in terms of yards yeah. per game. Ray Davis had 42 yards on 16 carries. So I thought Tennessee controlling the line of scrimmage was huge in that game. And if I were to add one more, I thought Joe Milton played his best game of the year. All right. Yeah, for, yeah for me, if I, I look at kind of where we are two-thirds through the way the season, that game yesterday kind of sums up who they truly are. I think we keep hoping for them to show sparks of what they were last year, and that's just not going to happen. And so they're a team that's going to, you know, kind of muddle their way through it. They're going to have flashes of being pretty good and then flashes of just – falling apart and not picking up things like they need to. So I think what we saw last night is who Tennessee truly is. Yeah. Yeah, Tennessee started and finished the game the way it needed to. They start out running the football really well, Jalen Wright with a big run, and then Dylan Sampson helped close it out that way. The, the, the uh, fourth quarter, four and a half minutes to go, needing first downs. They went to Sampson, Sampson again, and then Joe Milton running the football. Mm -hmm. So what they need to do, closing out the game, I wondered, okay, if they punt this football away and Devin Leary comes down the field with the game that he's had and scores a touchdown to win the game, imagine the conversation today. The run game put it away. Yep. Yeah. I think, I think a couple of things. I think to your poll question, it's the last two games is Joe Milton running the ball changes this offense, making him run, saying you're going to get 10 to 12 carries a game. 
That's the, that's the game. I think it's improved his play, gets him into the game, and I think that's a big reason for the change. So looking at that, seeing what we've taken, was my big takeaway of this offense has figured a little bit of something out. It hasn't. It's not going to be like last year's. It's mm-hmm. not going to be that same type of offense. But rushing and requiring Joe Milton on certain number of plays per game running the ball is a must in this offense to get any kind of production going and to get him really involved in the game. My other big takeaway just confirms what I always know. Death, taxes, and beating <laughs> Kentucky no matter yeah. what. That's what's going to happen. It's remarkable that Kentucky, and we've said on this show for many years, you've said on this show uh, since you've joined us, and that is Tennessee will find a way to lose to Florida. Kentucky will find a way to lose to Tennessee. Uh, it may be a bizarre way. It may be something you've never seen. But it's nine times out of ten it's going to happen. It's remarkable. Kentucky, our Kentucky viewers get mad at me always saying that. Hey, look, Tennessee fans get mad at me when I say you're going to do this against Florida. So it's just the same thing that, that Tennessee fans go through when it goes to Gainesville. One thing about Milton running the ball, they've said that, well, he was banged up early in the year. We couldn't do that as much with him. Was he banged up to start the season? I know no. he got hurt, and they didn't run him for a couple right. of weeks. But I just don't know that they, they viewed that as we have to do it as much as they're now seeing, oh, yeah, we have to do it. Yeah, I think you're right about that. I, I don't think Milton was – I think they intentionally didn't have him run, or some of those zone reads were not really zone reads. I think they were predetermined runs. But here's what I think they've done with Milton. They realize they're trying to stay away from his weaknesses as best they can and play to strengths, but they know that he's got to run the ball a certain amount for this offense to work at an optimum level. Mm -hmm. And there was a zone read where he actually kept it and went for 13 yards late in that game. I thought, okay, that's what you got to do. He needs to carry it some on that zone read to keep the defense honest. I think it actually helps him, too. He hadn't been good prior to this year, earlier in this year, throwing the ball on the run. Yes. When he runs the ball more and he gets called into that, all of a sudden he looks better scrambling and looking down the field. Yeah. It just gets him into the game. Mm-hmm. Okay, quickly. I yeah, that, no, the, I, that was to my point is he's running and he's getting outside now. He was not accurate, but I think now those defenders – see him as a threat, so they're coming up, and that's where those receivers are now finding open uh, spots. Okay, we'll have a whole segment on Joe Milton a little later in the show, and again, I encourage you to go ahead and vote and tell us your thought on where is he right now. It looks like you are taking over that he is doing just fine. Thank you very much. All right, <laughs> my big point, let's go ahead and I'll put a graphic up with mine. It's kind of flipping the script yesterday. Entering mm-hmm. yesterday's game, Tennessee ranked fifth in the SEC in pass defense. They were giving up 201 yards a game. That's three yards worse than what Alabama was doing. Kentucky came in, they were the 13th ranked pass offense in the league. So, of course, what happens? <laughs> Devin Leary throws your eyes out. 28 of 39 for 372, two touchdowns, no interceptions, 39 passes, no picks. Tennessee's highest uh, allowed number previously was just 260 yards against Austin P. Leary had that before the third quarter was over. Uh, Kamal Haddon out yesterday. Mm-hmm. I thought you missed him as much guff as we've given him. And here's some irony. We made fun of this thing down at Florida. Yeah. Maybe he had the right idea since he separated his shoulder in the season. Yeah, that's why. That's why so, I got him hurt. <laughs> sorry, kid. <laughs> we were wrong. Um, the uh, Haddon was out, but your pass rush disappeared yesterday. Now, Josh Heupel, we'll bring this up a little later, but Josh Heupel, after the game, stood there silently. His whole thing was apparently Kentucky was holding on every play, and I know Vol fans feel that every week. Let me ask you guys, though. Pass rush disappeared. I'll ask you, pass rusher guy. Pass rush disappeared. Secondary was exposed. That was the first this year. We haven't seen it look that bad as it did yesterday. What happened with the pass rush? Let's start there. Well, they're still doing some of the things that Alabama did. They're keeping an extra guy in. And really, I think... You mean holding. Uh, no, <laughs> exactly. No, I mean, they're using some formations to put more guys in the box to, to guard against. Everybody's picking up our games a lot better. That's just better that they're expecting it. Seen it all on film now. Yeah, I think Pierce, though, a little bit to me, has a little digressed a little bit. He's going too much to the power bull rush too often, and he's not getting their feet moving upfield. I don't know what it is, but when he's trying to come back inside, what I've seen is everybody's got their guard looking. So they've got their guard sliding to him to help protect inside. So what's happening is the tackle on Pierce is oversetting outside, saying bring on the bull rush, getting ready for it. And when he comes back inside, there's a guy to pick him up. And so right now, they've really kind of built it on this. The other guys need games to win. I just have to beat that guy one-on-one to actually win in this front. And I think that's where they've looked and concentrated. He's got to find another move to figure out how to get through that. 
Josh, your thoughts on the secondary? Yeah, I mean, it looked like uh, Kentucky did a good job of preparing for James Pierce. And if the pressure's not there, the defense on the back end has yeah. a better chance to be exposed, right? They've, they've been so good up front all season long, but uh, Haddon was a loss. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Kentucky also has really talented receivers. Mm-hmm. Leary has been a disappointment. The receivers have been. They caught balls, contested balls, and that made a big difference too. Jimmy, this would concern me when you've got Missouri coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, yes, and not only that, uh, Brady Cook's having a very good year, but he's also mobile. He's a really good runner. So he, he's more of a running threat than Leary is. They also have, in my opinion, the best receiver in the SEC in Luther Burden. That's going to be a challenge for Tennessee. Mike, you're an offensive lineman, ex-offensive lineman. Uh, I don't know. You, maybe you still are. Maybe you still go out in the back <laughs> yeah, and run people over at the grocery store. That's right. uh, when you looked at what Kentucky was doing against Tennessee, did you see anything different in the way they were – Pass protecting? So I, I, I see the, the inside guys, your guards and your centers. I think Will alluded to it. You know, your outside guys are the ones that have the speed and the moves. Your inside guys, they're just trying to bull rush, right? You're not seeing a lot of special moves from them. You're not seeing them hitting corners, hitting gaps. They're just trying to collapse that pocket. Well, Kentucky has had two weeks to study for this. As an offensive lineman, if I know a guy's going to bull rush, and they were left on the field a while, I think that's why it, it got less and less uh, pressure on them. You know, he's bull rushing. I'm setting in. That's the easiest move for me to defend as an offensive lineman. If he's got other things where he's quick and hitting gaps and there's games, that gets more difficult. But I, I just don't think the inside guys were collapsing the packet, pa- pocket. Everything was kind of going behind him so he could step up and make his throws. Bottom line, Tennessee got the job done, though. They came through at the end when they had to. Uh, stopped Devin Leary and that passing attack on that final drive when they had the shot. The, the, they held it down uh, enough to get the win, I should say. So uh, congratulations to Tennessee on the 33-27 to victory. We'll continue to break it down. Let's take a look at the game gauge. We do this every week. We showed you before the season several stats that if Josh Heupel teams in his career versus FBS foes, if Josh Heupel teams hit these numbers, he wins about 90 95% of the time. 150 yards rushing. Got that with 253. Four and a half yards per carry. They were well over that at five and a half. Uh, six yards per play is what they want to hit. They were at 7.1 last night. The only one where they didn't come through, they only had one sack last night. And usually if they get three sacks, they win the game, but they won it without the three sacks last night. So that means let's go forward to the next graphic. Josh Heupel's record is now uh, 16 and 18. He improved by a win uh, when allowing 27 or more points. So Kentucky hit 27. Tennessee moved to 16 and 18 when allowing 27 or more points. They um, scored 30 again, so now they uh, – that sh- I should have changed that graphic. They're now two uh, – let's see here. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, 46 and 8. I did change it. I just didn't highlight it. 46 and 8 now in scoring 30 points or more. Folks, when you're making graphics at 3.30 in the morning, it gets a little loose. And then the turnover margin didn't come into play yesterday. Those teams both had no turnovers in that game. All right, when we come back, who was the best player on the field, from Tennessee or Kentucky? What was the worst coaching move? Were there any? Come on back on the Sports Source, we'll tell you.